Warning. Videos by Billy Allsbrooks do cause side effects. And those side effects are champions being born, dreams being realized, the weak becoming strong, weight loss, victory over unbelievable odds, incredible comeback stories, the sick being healed, marriages being restored, victory over all forms of addiction, job promotions, average people becoming millionaires, warriors becoming blessed and unstoppable. These videos will motivate and inspire you to take action. Warning, your faith is now being increased to the level it takes to move mountains. Grind. Arise, champion. I'm Billy Allsbrooks and I approve this message. God's word to disrupt and invade every segment of our existence. By submission, we initiate a spiritual coup d'etat that allows the Holy Spirit to start a revolution inside us, overthrowing our natural thinking, our self-serving fleshly behaviors. And by doing this, we bring ourselves into alignment with the power of the Almighty God. Now the object of this message is to teach you the art of war. So when your spiritual enemy attacks, which he will, you will have a playbook for victory. Now this is not a Bible study. This is boot camp. It's not a Bible lesson. This is preparation for war. I need you to take this seriously. Because some of you out there listening right now, your life is going to depend on whether you absorb this message or not. Because see, the war is right around the corner for some of you. And God gave me this message to prepare you for what's about to jump off. Now let me set the tone for this message. Believers don't run from the enemy. We don't run from fear. We seek it. We crush it. We stop it. They call us believers because we actually believe. I'm not talking about that ritual stuff that put a suit on Sunday and look good in the pew stuff, that religious stuff. I'm talking about faith, that real faith, that mountain moving faith, that I lay my hands on the sick and they recover faith. I'm talking about that walk around all day and talk to God like Abraham faith. That I love my neighbor like I love myself faith. I mean that pressed down, shaking together, running over kind of faith. They enemy don't want me. I don't play church. I am the church. And I'm here to start the second reformation. Lord, I give you my mouth. Speak to your people. When thou goest out to battle against thy enemies and seest horses and chariots and of people more than thou, be not afraid of them. For the Lord thy God you against your enemies to save you. So let me sum this up in plain English in case you didn't understand that. Before this war jumps off, you have already won. Now when the enemy attacks you, the first step in the art of war is to immerse yourself in the Word of God. Wisdom is the key to every victory. Now let me define wisdom. Wisdom is truth consistently walked out with discipline. Pay attention to my words. I said consistently walked out with discipline. Not one day I'm in the truth and the next day I'm not. No, every single moment of my existence, I strive to walk in that truth. Let's go deeper now. Wisdom consists of three elements. It's the word of God, which is the truth. It's wise counsel of that truth. And it's revelation by the Holy Spirit. You need all three of these to consistently walk truth out with discipline. A disciplined mind rooted in truth can do the impossible. When you are rooted in truth, the enemy is no match for you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Now, whatever area of your life that the enemy attacks, you got to find out what the Word of God says about that area of your life. Now, what I do is I go online, I go to Google, and I search Bible verses on that topic. 
whether it's on finances, my marriage, my ministry, healing, whatever the case, I read every single scripture there is about that area. God speaks and guides through his word. Now what he will do is he will give you a verse or two verses for you to stand on. And those verses will be your foundation for victory. Now I'll give you an example of what God did for me. When I was going through my seven, eight year battle with panic attacks and PTSD, God gave me Jeremiah 29 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. My struggle started when my dad passed away unexpectedly in front of me. That event, that traumatic event, triggered in me a fear of dying. The enemy has been using the same strategy since the beginning of time, and that is to destroy the truth. He wanted me to believe that it was over, to get me to believe in his vision. But God gave me a verse that shed light on that lie and said, no, hope in me, believe in me. Now when armies go into battle, they drape their soldiers down in camouflage to blend in with the terrain. So if they're in the desert, they wear desert camouflage. If they're in the snow, they wear snow camouflage. Now we as believers, when we go into battle, our camouflage is truth. When we're draped down in truth, the enemy cannot see us. See, truth is the attire for war. Step two in the art of war is to unleash your faith. Unwavering faith ignites the anointing. Now the anointing is unmerited favor wrapped in unlimited power that is designed to produce supernatural outcomes. And the purpose of these outcomes is to bring God glory. Our victories will bring attention to the kingdom. This is what I mean when I say, to God be the glory. Now let me clarify what unwavering faith is. Unwavering faith is to consistently believe in the unseen. Believers don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. If we can see a promise in the word of God, then we can rest assured that we have it. Real faith allows the words that we read, the promise, to manifest itself into reality. It rides our faith from the word into the physical. Now hear me out. When you're going through the season of struggle, in whatever area it is, you ask God to fulfill his word, his promise for you in that area, you ask him one time, and then you believe that God heard you and that he will move on your behalf. See, we are the Green Berets, the Navy SEALs, the Top Guns, and God's armies, and this is the way we as believers pray. If you keep on asking God for the same thing, the enemy's gonna think you didn't believe in the prayer that you prayed for the first time, and that's gonna make him bolder. See, begging don't move God, faith does, so we stand firm in what we pray for. And every time you get the urge to go back to God, you go back to God with thanksgiving, not asking, but thanksgiving, thanking him for answering what he said he would do. Praying like this invites in the unseen. We got to transition from making decisions based on feelings to those rooted in the word. You can either serve God or you can serve your emotions, but you can't serve both. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The power of faith is distributed through your mouth. See, your mouth is a creative device designed to call forth the fruit of truth. The words that you verbalize are a direct reflection of the belief systems that you have internalized. Your words will reveal you. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Those that love it shall eat the fruits thereof. We call things that be not as though they were. Step three in the art of war. You gotta think like a champion. Wars must be first one in the mind. Right thinking sustained long enough will eventually bring peace, order, and victory to any situation. Truth is the chiropractor of the mind. And that truth will align our spiritual spine. When spiritual war jumps off, logic will not produce your victory. But a mind aligned with the word will. Faith has nothing to do with being logical, rational, or practical. See, these three things are rooted in the finite. Therefore, they have limits. But our faith is rooted in the infinite, which has none. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Think like a champion. We live, love, and experience through our vocabulary. Therefore, we gotta speak like a warrior. Use words that excite 
inspire, and empower you. You don't want just a little breakthrough. You want a massive breakthrough. You don't want just a little healing. You want a complete restoration. You don't want to just pay your bills and scrape by. You want financial freedom, liberation. It's the words you use. Speak, think, talk, walk like a warrior. The devil can tell what rank you are in God's army by the words that you use. Now when all hell breaks loose, you gotta stay focused on God's promises, not your obstacles. It's your focus that will determine the level of peace that you experience during the season of struggle. Envision the victory. Get a vision for the outcome that you want. Paint that victory on the canvas of your mind. Then take up residency there. Don't lease, don't rent, own that victory. Think like a champion. You gotta see that victory so clear that you can take the keys and move in that place. Whatever you can possess with your mind, you will eventually possess with your body. Adopt the mindset of the unstoppable. Step four to the art of war is to pursue the presence of God constantly. Every time you get in the presence of God, you give birth to something. Now, most people think reading the word is the most important step. It's important, but it's not the most important. The most important step is getting along with God every single day. Because when you read the word, you will not understand it unless you have revelation. And the only place to get revelation is in the presence of God. See, there's atheists that know the Bible inside out, but they have no revelation of it. Before God ever gave the word, Abraham by faith was considered righteous. During this war, you're gonna need God to guide your steps. See, he knows what's coming and how to position you for victory. As believers, we must self-assess ourselves every single day to make sure that there's nothing in us hindering God from moving on our behalf. What I'm referring to is bitterness, anger, jealousy, resentment, fear, all this junk. These emotional toxins that the enemy is trying to get on the inside of us so it eats us from the inside out. On the battlefield, the military objective is to outflank your opponent. Now spiritually, the way the enemy outflanks us is from the inside. The only way though he can get inside is he has to have an invitation. We have to invite him in. If we don't do that, he has no access to us. We gotta do an emotional detox every single day small daily emotional course corrections will allow us to maintain the trajectory required for victory. Now this is how we enter into war. Prayer, praise, and worship. It's these three things that usher in the armies of God. Prayer, praise, and worship are the artillery of the believer. It's our blitzkrieg, our lightning warfare. This sets the tone for our living space. Because to be victorious, we've got to create an environment conducive to success. We do that by the word. You see, the enemy's lies can't hide in an environment of truth. It's like cutting on the lights. All the roaches run. The word is just not for defense. As Christians, it's time for us to get on the offensive. When you unleash these principles here, life will stop happening to you, and you will start happening to life. We don't just speak to the obstacle. We speak to the spirit behind the obstacle and tell it to leave. This is critical. You got to always be asking yourself this question in wartime and in peacetime. If I was the enemy, how would I attack me? You don't wait till the war jumps off to ask this question. This should be nonstop as a believer. If I was the enemy, how would I attack me? Faith-filled warriors around you. People that will encourage, inspire, and show life into you. That will lift you up in your moment of crisis, your season of struggle. And if these people aren't doing it in peacetime, they should not gonna do it in wartime. So you can need to examine every single one around you and see if these are the people that you need to be associating with. It might not seem like much to you now, but in a life or death situation, who's around you means everything. Examine your circle. Now, love is the highway that miracles travel on. It's the most powerful force in the universe. It gives us a direct line connection to the Almighty. So if you want to change your situation, sprinkle a little love into your situation. You see, love changes everything it touches. I'm not just talking about loving the people that love you. Even the non-believers can do that. I'm talking about loving the ones that are hard to love and loving them anyway. That's the response that allows God to enter into the situation. Only 
Those who love are qualified to function fully in the power. Now that brings us to the last step. Step five in the art of war, which is to outlast the enemy. Failure is not an option. You gotta refuse to concede to any other outcome than the one believed for, the one God promised you. That's it. Now you've heard me say it before. Nothing can be denied the one who won't be denied. As believers, the only outcome is unconditional surrender by the enemy. We're not making no concessions, no negotiations, and no compromises, no halfway victories. We're getting it all with interest. We making the enemy pay us back for every ounce of trouble that he gave us. Man, I'm gonna be like a bill collector. I'm gonna call the enemy every single day and say, you better give me what you owe me. No excuses. Now it's very important to understand that victory is a daily process. You heard me say, success is a marathon of consistency walked out one day at a time. Now, when we try to take too much of the future or too much of the past and shove it into the day, we become overwhelmed. And when you get overwhelmed, you make mistakes. You get tired, you get worn down, you get drained, you don't think straight. And that's the moment the enemy's waiting for. He's waiting for you to slip up. He knows that overextended and wore down armies become vulnerable and expose themselves to defeat. Every day you gotta get up and keep your focus and mind on today. Do that by asking this question. What is the most important outcome? that I need to achieve today? What's the most important thing today that will bring me closer to victory? Victory is just the fruit of doing the right things day in and day out. It's simple, win the day. Don't give the enemy no foothold in your life. Focus on the things that really matter. Victory requires strategic planning, laying out the goals and the benchmarks that are needed to produce the outcome you are looking for. Every second, every minute, every action needs to be held accountable to producing your victory. Success must be scheduled. You gotta wrap all this stuff that you're doing in balance. Balance makes the warrior invincible. God is not the author of chaos. Bring order to your life. Anchor your day around these five things. Prayer time, reading the word, healthy food, exercise, and sleep. Now I'm gonna say it again. Balance makes the warrior invincible. We as believers, we gotta do more than just read the word. We gotta breathe it, bleed it, and become it. I wanna end with this story. Desmond Tutu, during the deepest and darkest days of apartheid, when the government was trying to shut down all opposition, Usher Bishop Desmond Tutu held a church service. Now the military and police force came out in order to intimidate the people. But Desmond Tutu held his service anyway. Now with the police and the military in full force inside the cathedral, he said to them, you are powerful. You are very powerful, but you are not God. And I serve a God who cannot be mocked. So since you've already lost, since you've already lost, I invite you to come join the winning side. That's how a champion speaks. Like that. Since you've already lost, come join the winning side. That's how you talk to your enemy. That's what brought the walls of apartheid down. And that's what will bring the enemy down before you. Speak like that. Talk like that. Think like that. Walk like that. It's the art of war. I'm Billy Osbrooks, blessed and unstoppable. And this is the second reformation. To God be the glory. Truth is the new black, the couture for greatness. Get your t-shirts now at blessedandunstoppable.com. Join the movement. Psalms 51.10 says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Today, I'm going to lay out the seven steps to doing a spiritual house cleaning. The objective of this lesson is to help you lay a strong and solid foundation for enduring success. Father, I pray 
that you uncover and reveal to us anything in our spiritual and emotional clauses that are hindering our success. Tear down anything in our life that is getting in the way of your plan. Help us clean up our thinking, our motives, our woke, so that we can represent you with unquestionable character and credibility. In Jesus' name. Now the first step to doing a spiritual house cleaning is to get in the presence of God daily. Drawing near to God invites in the cleaning crew. Now the world believes that we must clean up our lives before we come to God. But that's a lie from the enemy. We are incapable of cleaning up our lives on our own. We need God to do it. Jesus is the shower. The water is the spirit. And the word is our soul. Let's get our clean on. It's time, ain't it? Now see, here's the truth about sin. Sin needs to be fed in order to survive. And it cannot sustain itself in the presence of God. So the more we get along with God, the less the enemy can do to us. I don't care how bad your life seems right now. There's nothing that God can't fix. So don't let the enemy lie to you. All you have to do is bring your troubles to God and lay them on the altar. Let's close this step out with the word. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Hebrews 10, 22. Step two, the spiritual cleaning. Wash your mind daily with the word. The most effective way to attack sin is to attack it not at the fruit, but at the root. And that root is your thinking, corrupt thinking is the mother of all backsliding. When you get your mind out of line with the word of God, you set yourself up for trouble. All sin starts in the mind. Sin is aggressive, it's just like cancer. It takes root in our thinking, and then it uses our thinking to manifest itself into other areas of our life. It's progressive. In its early stages, it masks itself in disguise so that you don't even recognize it as sin. It drapes itself in spiritual camouflage. Now sin goes through seven stages. The first stage, entrance of the thought. The second stage, entertainment of the thought. The third stage, examination of the thought. The fourth stage, engaging in the action, bringing the thought into the physical realm. The fifth stage, experiencing the temporary pleasures of it. The sixth stage, excusing the action and justifying it. The last stage is to enslave the host. The key here to overcome a sin is to catch it in its early stages. The word of God is the antidote, the vaccine, the sin killer. Sin cannot sustain itself in the presence of God, and God is the word, and the word is God. Truth is the chiropractor of the mind, and when the mind, just like the spine, is adjusted and properly aligned, sin can cause you no more pain. Get your flu shot. Wash your mind daily with the word. Let's confirm this step with the word. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Romans 12, 2. Step three, the spiritual house cleaning. Uproot and evict the enemy from your mouth. Kings and queens have no business speaking like peasants. As believers, we are heirs to the promise. We are all royalty, children of the most high God. Doubt, fear, and negativity, none of that junk should have any place in the mouth of a champion. The words you speak mirror the inner relationship you have with God. They reveal the true level of your acceptance of God's word. There's a lot of people out here that say they're saved, but every time they keep opening their mouth, they sound like an atheist. You gotta stop talking that way. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and those that love us shall eat the fruits thereof. When you speak, let it be life. When you speak, let it be faith. When you speak, let it be power. Your mouth is a creative device designed to call forth the fruit of truth. So let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. You see, the devil can't read your mind, but he can hear your words. And every time you speak jealousy, hatred, bitterness, 
bitterness, divisiveness, doubt, fear, all that junk, all his stuff. It's like blood to a shark. Speaking negativity and being pessimistic, that's a sign of spiritual defilement. Uproot and evict the enemy from your mouth. Guard your words like your life depends on it because it does. Your mouth is a weapon. Don't let your enemy use it against you. Your adversary, he knows the power that's in you. He knows he can't attack you with a frontal assault. So he's using the Vietnam strategy, the guerrilla spiritual warfare. And he only attacks when you're alone, isolated, complacent, and overconfident. So as believers, we must stay on the offensive and attack him at all times. Guard your mouth. Give him no place in you. Let's confirm this with the word. Matthew 12, 34. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Step four for your spiritual cleaning. Scan your spiritual closet for traces of the enemy. The more we are exposed to sin, the more comfortable we are in its presence. Demonic calluses make us numb to it. And the more numb we are, the more vulnerable we are. It's much easier to deal with the beast when he's a baby. Scan your spiritual closet for traces of the enemy. Even as believers, we are still wrapped in flesh, which means we will still fall into sin. The key is to catch it early before it takes root. Being a Christian does not mean that you will never sin. It just means you know who to bring the sin to when you do. The world loves to point out when a Christian falls, when a good man or good woman backslides. That is the enemy. That is the accuser. You see, the Holy Spirit will never condemn. It will only convict. And that conviction is only to bring you back into order, to bring you back into alignment with God's plan for your life. We all fall short of the glory of God. And he knows that the transgression, the fact that you slipped up is not the most important thing to God. It's what you do after you slip. Confess it. Bring it to him right away. For every flaw, addiction, or weakness that we have melts away in the presence of God. Now the enemy's objective is to convince you that what you did, that mistake, that slip up, is unforgivable, that God won't take you back. Now I'm gonna tell you right now, the devil is a liar. The blood of the lamb is sufficient. Scan your spiritual closet for traces of the enemy. Now let's confirm this step. First Peter 5.8. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Step five to your spiritual cleaning. Shine the light on the hidden, then address it. The Holy Spirit is the antivirus software that scans our hearts and minds for contamination. It's the things that we do in the dark that have the best shot at destroying us. Hidden sin is explosive and always the most dangerous. That's why we got to bring it into the light. Darkness allows sin to breed, strengthen, and establish a firm foothold in its host. In guerrilla warfare, the enemy owns the night. That's why we must stay in the light at all times. Now, I know this is meant for somebody out there. Don't let short-term pleasures become long-term pain. Ask yourself this question. If I was the enemy, where would I attack me? What behaviors are putting my walk with God in jeopardy? To effectively defend yourself, you must know the devices of the enemy. What hidden sins have I committed that I need to bring into the light? See, when it's in the light, God can deal with it. God can work on you. God can take your junk, your mess, your mistake, and turn it into a beautiful masterpiece. I'm about to tell you something that'll change your life if you accept it. We don't just serve a God. We serve the almighty God. The God who is mighty and above all things. What the devil meant for harm, God will make good. Your past mistakes will be the key to your future victories. Your test right now will become your testimony. Your humility will usher in restoration. Your obedience hits the reset button. Bring it to him and his grace will set you free. No more bondage, no more change to the things of the dark. Shine the light on the hidden and then address it. 
Now let's confirm it with the word. Psalm 32, 5. Then I acknowledge my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Step six to your spiritual house cleaning. Identify the entry points and shut the gates of access. Toxic influences need an invitation. The truth is the enemy cannot enter your life until he gets your permission. The key is positioning. Put yourself in an environment conducive to success. Suffocate the enemy with a righteous environment. Stay alert. Anything we entertain that's not of God hinders our relationship with God. Because what you focus on consistently, you will eventually give your heart to. Now we got to be careful who we associate with and who we hang around. Because if the enemy can't get you to sin on your own, he'll import it through those around you. If he can't get a hold of your mouth, he will sow the seeds of destruction over you through someone else. Doubt and fear are the plague. They are very contagious. Put up barriers. Quarantine the naysayers. Let them have no room in your life. If you want to be successful, if you're searching for greatness in your life, then it's very important to make sure you choose the right people to associate with. You can't hang around negative and pessimistic people and expect to do amazing things. It's like if you live in New York, Boston, or the South long enough, eventually, subconsciously, you're gonna pick up that dialect. And it's the same with sin. If you're hanging around with people thinking the wrong way, speaking the wrong way, living the wrong way, eventually, you're gonna start doing the same thing. Identify the entry points and shut the gates of access to the enemy. Now let's confirm this with the word. 2 Corinthians 6, 14. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? Step seven, the final step, the spiritual house cleaning. Use the spiritual bleach that really cleans. Now this bleach is life changing. It contains three elements, which are love, gratitude, and forgiveness. Now let's start with love. Wherever love goes, the blessing flows. God is love. And whatever is not of love is not of God. Love has an eternal, infinite vibration that reaches to the core of everything in existence. It is by far the most powerful thing in the universe. All miracles originate from it. All powers of nature bow to it. And all success hinges on it. We overcome, not by force, might, or money, nor by our knowledge, talents, or connections. We are victors, not because of what we do, but because God loves us. By plugging into this power, we can approach life from a place of strength. By consistently projecting this divine energy, your options and outcomes become limitless. Element two, gratitude. Cultivating a spirit of gratitude, thankfulness, and praise set spiritual restoration in motion. When we give God praise, and when we are thankful, it's like nails on a chalkboard to the enemy. He can't stand it. Element three, forgiveness. Now forgiveness is the war cry of the true believer. It's dialysis for the soul. Now success chases those who master the art of letting go. Forgiveness is the only way to bring your mind, body, and spirit back into alignment. Untether your life from the past so that the peace of God which surpasses all understanding can rule in your heart. Now let's confirm this step with the word. Isaiah 118. Come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they will be white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. Let's close in prayer. Thank you, Father, for helping us to stay focused on the most important things in life. Thank you for assisting us with keeping our eyes on your plan. Continue to guide us with your spirit so that we can be mentally and spiritually united. Clean us up on the inside so that we can walk out the victory. In Jesus' name, I'm Billy Allsbrooks, blessed and unstoppable. To God be the glory.
blessed and unstoppable. Success starts with putting the right things into your mind. And my new book, Blessed and Unstoppable, was strategically designed to align your mind with the laws of success. This curriculum will teach you the inner mechanics required to go from average to phenomenal. From living a life with limits to being blessed and unstoppable. As you follow this guide step by step, amazing breakthroughs will happen. New doors of opportunity will open and favor will begin to chase you down. Blessed and Unstoppable is a 31 day devotional on the laws of success. This book will instigate the thought process and actions required to transform your life. Each day has a Bible verse, a teaching on that day's principle, a positive affirmation, a prayer for the day, self-assessment questions, success quotes, action steps, and a powerful inspirational message. Regardless of what field you're in, Blessed and Unstoppable is your blueprint for success. Get your copy at blessedandunstoppable.com. Also available on Amazon. Israel wandered in the desert for 40 years out of doubt and fear. Too scared to go seize and take what had already been given to them. This plague of doubt wiped out a whole generation. But from the ashes, God arose a new generation from which Joshua led the descendants of the unbelievers into the promised land. The same God that gave them victory back then will give you victory today. Now whether it's healing you need, strength to overcome addiction, funding to start your new business, restoration of your marriage, emotional healing, victory over panic attacks, whatever it is, I'm here to tell you today that with God, all things are possible. And if God promised you something in his word, you can take it to the bank that he's going to deliver. God ain't never defaulted on a promise. Now I'm going to lay out the steps for your victory while here on earth. So you can walk on earth as it is in heaven. See, we don't need to die to experience heaven. We can bring heaven to us right now. Now the first step to seize in the promises of God is faith. The only way to enter into the promised land is to seize it by faith. By faith, we become partakers of his divine nature. Ooh, let me go deeper now. See, the spirit set the physical in motion. Therefore, we can dictate to the physical through the power of the spirit that lives within us. God said, let there be light. He set all the physical and natural laws in motion with one word. God is spirit. Therefore, when we align with the spiritual, we have the same dictatorial powers over the physical. See, your faith activates the spirit. And that spirit lifts us up into the presence of God, aligns us with his power, and then allows us to do what the world in the physical says is impossible. That's what the scripture means. With God, all things are possible. We conquer, not by faith in our own ability, but by faith in the one to which all things bow. Here's the secret. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Destiny is obligated by universal law to concede to the demands of unwavering faith. And I believe faith is the only language the universe responds to. So if you want to seize the promises here on earth, you need to become fluent in the language of belief. Now here's what true faith is. True faith is to laugh at any evidence, challenge, or obstacle that runs contrary to the promises of God. Now what the enemy is hoping is that you won't look in the mirror and see the champion that God made you to be. I'm speaking to somebody out there. It's time for you to dream bigger. Aim higher. And shoot for the stars. It's time to stop settling for less than God's best. 
That is not the word. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. You want to be successful in life? You got to do more than believe that. You got to own that. When faith becomes mobilized, transformation happens. God has planted a dream in each and every one of you out there. And some of you are running from it. The era and days of living in defeat are over. No longer shall we be content trading in our dreams, ambitions, and destinies for a lukewarm state of existence. Let us not seek anything above what God is willing to give, but let us not settle for one ounce less than what he has promised. Now many times we downsize our expectation of God out of fear of disappointment that he won't show up and fulfill his end. But God, your daddy told me to tell you that he loves you and he ain't never ever gonna let you die. And that dream you gave up on, it's time to pick it back up. God is about to do a new thing in your life. Dreams watered with unwavering faith eventually become reality. Your enemy doesn't want me to tell you this. But one person who believes in a dream can overcome an army of 10,000 doubters. Dreams bloom in the fertile soil of expectation. Are you expecting God to show up? Are you expecting God to show up? Now I want you to be aware of the devices of the enemy. The enemy will always be in opposition to what God has promised you. Religion is Satan's weapon. Relationship is God. Your problems are no match for God. Now the second step to walking in the fullness of the blessing while here on earth is obedience. Now to redeem God's earthly promises, we must align every aspect of our lives with his will. The greater the obedience, the more God can use you. And there's nothing on earth greater than being used by God. Now let me define what true obedience is. Obedience is to seek relationship with God. And from that relationship, all the requirements of the law are met. See, legalism chokes the spirit, but grace unleashes it. Any area of your life not submitted to God is in a state of rebellion. And rebellion is the fruit of doubt. And doubt is a type of kryptonite that destabilizes the connection between heaven and us. I gotta keep it real, cause this is important. Some of you out there are asking God to bless you in one area of your life, but you rebelling in another. Now let me give you an example, a clear cut example. You praying for God to bless that dream of that new business, or to help you in your finances, or to heal you, but yet you running around on your wife. Ooh, I gotta keep it real now. I gotta keep it real with you, see? Now you gotta get that area of your life that's in rebellion back in line. See, and what you do, all the promises of God are yes and amen. In Hebrew, the word amen means truth. And the lies of the enemy cannot hide an environment of truth. So we need to get a whole lot of that amen inside us. The reason we gotta stay in alignment is revelation diminishes in an environment of sin. Righteous living allows us constant access to God's power. The prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now to stay in this kingdom walk, we gotta constantly stand on God and check ourselves on the inside. You see, detoxing emotionally on a daily basis makes one immune to the devices of the enemy. Toxic emotions become inner parasites. And if not dealt with, they will cause mental, physical, and spiritual imbalances. Now what I'm referring to here is anger, bitterness, resentment, jealousy, envy, malice, all the stuff that the enemy tries to plant on the inside. Like that movie Frozen, you gotta let it go. Now step three, to seize in the promises of God. It's vision. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Vision is the genesis of all greatness. Vision is that mental blueprint from which your life will be built. Just like a house 
has an architect. You are the architect of your life. Success requires self-awareness. And that self-awareness arises out of vision. Now true vision is having divine revelation as to who God is and who he made you to be. It's understanding the calling God placed on your life. And having full knowledge of your God-given gifts, talents, and abilities. Knowing your identity is a game changer. There's no alcohol, drugs, sex, or any amount of money that can match the natural high of being in your calling. Doing what God made you to do. Opportunity stalks people with vision. You got to be in the right place in order to receive the blessing. Many of you out there are struggling because you're out of position. You're asking God to bless you. He's already blessed you. You're just in the wrong place. You can't receive it over there. You got to get to where God called you to be. Now, if you don't have a vision for your life, it's time to get one. Ask God to show you what your life is supposed to look like. What does he want for your future? Ask him for clarity. Now, I got to keep it real. Some of you out there are chasing a vision that is not from God. If your vision contradicts the word of God, then it is not from him. There's a voice on the inside of you that's been talking all along. It knows exactly what you were designed to do. It's in your DNA. God is not the altar of confusion. So he wants you to have clarity because clarity is gravity. If sustained long enough, it will attract the circumstances needed to create the outcome in vision. If it's healing you want, then you gotta get a vision for that healing. You gotta see yourself in your mind already healed. You gotta get that vision for healing so clear. 4K, high definition, resolution. I mean, make that thing so big that it won't fit in your mind any longer. That the only place it has to go is into the physical. Grab with both hands what God has promised you and never let it go. Apply the same process to every area of your life. You got to get a vision for your marriage, for your finances, for your children, for your spiritual life. Success starts in the mind. Now the fourth thing you got to do to seize the promises of God is to get your mind right. I'm talking about your mindset. Your paradigms, your belief systems, your thinking patterns. The word says, be not conformed to this word, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Disciplined mind, rooted in truth, can do the impossible wherever you want to go. You got to first go there with your thinking to walk in the fullness of the blessing. We must let go of the belief systems that have been keeping us in bondage. If we keep on thinking the same, we're going to keep on getting the same results. Our lives are the fruit of our most consistent thought patterns. Now the change of behavior, we must first address the mindset that produces it. Let me give you an example. Let's say you're trying to stop drinking. So you go get your beer, you go get your alcohol, you get all that stuff out of the house. Your house is clean. But if you don't get the alcohol out of you, your thinking, your thought processes, the belief systems that produce the drinking in the first place, it won't be long before that beer and that alcohol will be right back in your house. Victory starts in the mind. Once you take full possession of the promise in your mind, nothing can stop you. Your mindset is the lens which you see the whole world through. If you want to seize the promises of God, you got to effectively adjust that lens and see it the way God sees. To see accurately, we must see everything in this world through the word. Champions, understand what gives them the advantage? It's their mindset. You got to discipline and condition your mind to do the impossible. Now for you to turn your dreams into reality, you're going to have to master the psychology of winning. Day in and day out, you got to conquer the battlefield of the mind. You got to make sure that the enemy doesn't get any foothold, any root in your thinking. Losers bow to obstacles. Champions make obstacles bow to them. Champions don't make excuses, they make adjustments. This is the mindset. This is what you gotta adopt if you wanna go to the next level. Hear me now, it's impossible to build success on the mindset that doesn't support it. We gotta cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Kingdom thinking, if sustained long enough, 
will eventually produce peace and order in any situation. You can only go as far in life as your mind and grind will carry. Now that brings us to number five. In order to walk in the fullness of the blessings, to seize the promises of God, we got to take action. Action is the undisputable evidence which reveals one's true level of faith. Now I want to clear something up. Sometimes in life, God will say, peace, be still, and know that I am God. Meaning, he is going to make the thing happen. That you just need to sit tight and let him do it. A great example of this is God freeing Israel from the captivity of Pharaoh. He led Israel out of Egypt on his own. They didn't have to do anything. He sent the ten plagues, and they left there with all the treasures and riches of Egypt. But now to seize the promised land, Joshua had to bring the army in and they had to seize it by faith. They had to play their role. They had to take action. See, many of you out there, you just praying and praying and praying for God to do everything. That's not the way it works because you don't get stronger like that. You don't learn anything like that. Your mind imagines the dream. But in order for destiny to bloom, it must consistently be watered with blood, sweat, and tears. Hard work is the membership fee that filters out the weak from the strong. Successful people don't just work hard. They work hard at the things that matter. That's wisdom. In your field, find out what the most important factors are that determine success. And then place all your time, energy, and focus there. You got to go 120 on the 20. The 20% 20 that actually matters. That's where you got to put all your resources. Actions and behaviors that continually align with the promises will eventually produce them. Dream big. But remember this. Your work ethic needs to match the size of that dream. You've heard me say it before. You can't purchase greatness with Bitcoin. You got to purchase it with the currency of hard work. Now the word says a slack hand causes poverty. But the hand of the diligent makes rich. Be not a hearer of the word only, but be a doer also. Wisdom has not been fully accepted until it's been applied. 120 beast mode. You gotta be willing to go all in. From sun up to sundown, you gotta be willing to get down. Grind until you shine. Stay prayed up. And then go put that work in. God said, I will bless all the work that I hand work of thy hand. That means we got to do work. Now I gave you the blueprint. Now go out there and seize the promises of God. Get what's yours. I'm Billy Allsbrooks, blessed and unstoppable. To God be the glory. Blessed and unstoppable. Success starts with putting the right things into your mind. And my new book, Blessed and Unstoppable, was strategically designed to align your mind with the laws of success. This curriculum will teach you the inner mechanics required to go from average to phenomenal. From living a life with limits to being blessed and unstoppable. As you follow this guide step by step, amazing breakthroughs will happen. New doors of opportunity will open and favor will begin to chase you down. Blessed and Unstoppable is a 31 day devotional on the laws of success. This book will instigate the thought process and actions required to transform your life. Each day has a Bible verse, a teaching on that day's principle, a positive affirmation, a prayer for the day, self-assessment questions, success quotes, action steps, and a powerful inspirational message. Regardless of what field you're in, Blessed and Unstoppable is your blueprint for success. Get your copy at blessedandunstoppable.com. Also available on Amazon.